Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. This is not an episode of the Hardware City channel and also not an episode of the Oberon channel. This is just an episode of my YouTube channel because um, today I want to show you something that does not belong to the Oberon channel and not to the Hardware City channel and not to the uh, Rack channel as well. Um, you know that in the past I um, did a lot of um, experiments with fractals. I have not shown every experiment I made in the past in uh, this video channel, in this YouTube channel, but I, um, I'm dealing with fractals since very long time and I've tried all kinds of algorithms and um, uh, transformations um, what you can do with the fractal to, to check out how it, how it behaves. I was always fascinated by those, let's say, creative forces behind um, a fractal that is able to generate so complex structures from uh, very simple algorithms. And one thing I um, uh, ex experimented a lot of with is a so-called point translation. A point translation is uh, quite simple. Just imagine you have a set of points, let's say, scattered across a screen or a piece of paper. And then you have an algorithm that works over those points. Um, so imagine that this is a point that is uh, set to the background color, so it's unset. And the algorithm is um, uh, taking this point and checking if it's set or unset. And depending on the state, if it's set or unset, it calculates a displacement. A displacement where to um, grab the next point. So let's give it an example. This is a point, let's say, at position 0, point, uh, zero, zero uh, x0 zero and, uh, and y0. Then the algorithm takes this point and says, okay, what kind of point is it? Oh, it's okay, it's a point that is not set. It's set to the background color, so it's unset. So what I'm doing now, due to my um, programming behavior, is I set this point to 1 let's say, to this color here. Let's say this is black, for example. And uh, after setting this, um, when the point previously was unset and now is set, I calculate its placement from, uh, let's say, three positions to the right and one position up. This is this here. This is here the next point that the algorithm grabs. And then it does the same. So it looks at this point and, and um, asks if this point set or unset. If it's still unset, then the algorithm does the same. It sets the point to black and then calculates the next displacement. This is three positions to the right and one to the up, so it's outside the screen now. In case um, we have a point that's already set and the algorithm encounters it, it could say, for example, okay, now I just, um, I calculate this place in which is, let's say, um, two positions to the left and two positions down, for example, here. And then it goes on with this point the same way it does with other points. So this is um, the basics um, function of point translation. And if you remember, one of my episodes are made in the record channel, um, I showed you already um, some kind of um, uh, simple, uh, let's say, fractal based on this kind of displacement. I started with a simple displacement, a fixed displacement, uh, based on the question of the point is set or unset, and then I went over to some more complex um, computations like um, deriving the displacement from um, random function combined with a sine or cosine function, that was controlled by a an, an steadily or persistently incremented um, phase angle. Uh, to, and then I went over to more complex patterns. But now I had a different idea. What if we are, would not control this process of uh, calculating displacements by a simple formula? What if we would use some other uh, process that is not so well defined? What if we would use sound. Now you're asking yourself what I'm talking about. Okay, imagine you have a sound file, a Microsoft encoded, PCM encoded WAV file. This WAV file normally um, consists uh, of data that is divided into tracks, left track and right track. 
In the tracks you have um, let's say an array of numbers, 16-bit numbers running in both tracks. And these are the audio samples generated from uh, um, a sampling frequency, for example, 22.1 kilohertz or 44.2 uh, kilohertz. I don't know exactly. Something like this. So it's a consecutive stream of numbers. What if you would take these numbers to calculate the displacement? Let's imagine that we have this left and right channel and we take the numbers of the left channel to calculate the horizontal displacement and the right channel to calculate the vertical displacement. It's a very simple approach. It would enable us to um, abandon the use of, of formulas that are always restricted or constrained in the way that are working and going over to use any kind of sound. Can you imagine what this means? We could use any kind of sounds, human speech, music, um, recorded environmental noise, whatever you want to want to have, you can apply to this, um, let's say, transformation algorithm, to this point translation, and you would get always different images. It's fascinating because in my first approach I made um, back in the episode with the, with the I showed a record channel, you all only could choose some very um, from a limited amount of, let's say, transformation formulas. Let's say two or three different transformations. But now with sound you can use whatever you want. And I have written a program in Pure Basic. It's not very complicated. It was, it was an, a nice weekend project <coughs> to realize this. And I want to show you how this works. And I won't go into details now because um, uh, basically, this would um, was make explode the, the length of this video, and I want my videos to become shorter, not longer. I will just go over to show you um, the sounds I use for the transformation process, process and the outcome of it. That means the images that were generated from it, and that will be the second part of this video. I wish you a lot of fun. Thank you.